today I'm very bullish on REITs because they are priced at their lowest valuations in many years, but I'm still objective enough to recognize that not all glitter is gold in the REIT sector. This is a vast and versatile sector with over 200 companies, and while some are very attractive, some others are over leveraged, poorly managed, or they own cyclical assets that are today struggling. Therefore, I think that quite a few REITs are going to have to cut their dividend in the coming years, but which one are they? Hey everyone, this is Yulsi, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about five REITs that I expect to cut their dividend in the coming years. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video? It will really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support. So the first read that I want to discuss here is called Easterly Government Properties. Its ticker symbol is DEA. Let me start here by saying that generally speaking, I think that this is a good read. I think that they are well managed, they have a unique strategy, and they own government lease properties that have historically done quite well. These properties are recession resistant, they have years left on their leases, and therefore the company could maintain its dividend for quite some time. But eventually, I think that the REIT is likely to cut its dividend because its payout ratio is today too high at around 93%, it has too much leverage with a debt to EBITDA in excess of 7 times, and then finally and most importantly, I think that its properties are going to suffer significant difficulties in the coming years. Most of its assets are single tenant office buildings that are leased to different government agencies. Having the government as your tenant is great because it lowers risks, however they are not immune to the growing trend of remote work. According to a recent study by the US Government Accountability Office, today 17 out of 24 agencies are using less than a quarter of the office capacity. And those other agencies that use more of the office are also using less than half of their capacity. So clearly government agencies are today leasing way too much office space and by downsizing they could reduce their expenses. This recently prompted a famous REIT activist investment firm called Land and Building to initiate a short position. They also issued a statement on their Twitter that says that the downsizing of the office footprint by the government agencies is likely in our view. 98% of easterly government properties' rents are from US government agencies. Land and Buildings has a short position in DEA. And making things even worse is that the government really holds significant bargaining power with the landlords. They know really well that the last thing that the landlord would want is that the government agency moves out of their building. This is because for one, it would lead to significant capex to remodel the property and to release it. And then for two, it would also likely lead to an expansion in the cap rate of the property property because when you have the government as your tenant your property typically trade as a lower cap rate because a safe tenant if now they have to release it to a regular private company the cap rate would expand reducing the value of the building therefore the government agencies know that they hold the cards in the negotiation and landlords are going to have to make significant concessions to keep their buildings occupied today this street already has a payout ratio that's too high it has high leverage its interest expense is going to go up in the coming years and as it gives some concessions to its tenants I think that a dividend cut is very likely to occur. Then the second read I think is likely to cut its dividend is called Outfront Media, ticker symbol OUT. This is actually a read that we own in our core portfolio at Hyatt Landlord, and so we are bullish on its long-term prospects. Even then, I think that a dividend cut is likely here because this is a billboard read, which is quite a cyclical business because you're relying on advertisement spending, which typically goes down during recessions. And then on top of that, it has quite a bit of leverage. And with the recent rise in interest rates, we know that its cash flow is going to decrease in in the coming years. So I think that the combination of a coming recession and the recent surge in interest rates is likely going to be too much for the REIT, forcing it to cut its dividend in the short term. However, the reason why we are still bullish on this REIT is because share price has crashed over the past years, more than reflecting this coming dividend cut. And as a result, it's quite opportunistic today as we are buying it at the bottom. In the coming years, as we go into a recession, I expect interest rates to eventually be cut. And as times get better, the business of Outfront is also going to recover and I expect significant ups side to shareholders who buy today. Then the third REIT or REIT-like entity I should really say because this company is not officially structured as a REIT despite operating as one is called Dick Asset. This is a German landlord that owns mostly industrial and office buildings. Once more I'm bullish on this company, I own a position but I think that a full suspension of the dividend is likely in the near term. The company has too much debt with an LTV of 60%, it has relatively short debt maturities as well and it needs to pay off some of this. Its dividend payout rate may seem low 
today at around 60%. But even then, I think it will be really prudent for the company to fully suspend the dividend, use this cash flow to pay off that maturities, and this is likely what the management is going to do. Even then, I'm still bullish on this company because share price has already crashed, more than reflecting this coming dividend suspension, and today it's priced at a 70% discount to its net asset value, which clearly indicates that the market is worrying about the long-term solvency of the company. By suspending the dividend, they will increase their chances of survival, which would ultimately benefit the company in the coming years. If we are right here and the company makes it through this crisis, we think that the upside potential could be up to 200%, and this is why we like the risk to reward of the company, despite it being quite speculative. Then the fourth read that we expect to cut its dividend is called Global Net List, eco symbol GNL. This is a read that we've covered previously on the channel, and so we'll keep it short. The company is poorly managed with significant conflicts of interest, it has too much debt, it owns a lot of single tenant office buildings, and it's now going through a costly merger and management internalization that's going to likely lead to right sizing of the dividend. Recently, one of the biggest shareholders of the company came out and issued the following statement. The proposed merger is another deceptive effort by AR Global, which is the external manager of Global Net Lease, in complicity with Global Net Lease and RTL, which is the rate it's merging with, to skirt ongoing proxy fights against them and the ultimate accountability that will face them. Shareholders should be on high alert that the compromised boards of Global Net Lease and RTL approved a deal that would arrogate a 375 million ransom payment to AR Global, Michael Whale and Nick Scorch in return for all the value they've destroyed. Blackwell strongly opposes the merger and expects most other shareholders to do the same. So in short here, I think that this is a read that's really poorly managed. The management is looking for its own interest here. They've cut the dividend in the past. They are overpaying today, have too much leverage, they are going through a costly merger. I think that a dividend cut is a no-brainer here. And then the fifth three that I still want to discuss here is called Boston Properties, ticker symbol is BXP. You may be a bit surprised that I'm including this rate in this list of rates that are likely to cut its dividend because Boston Properties is typically considered to be a blue chip rate. It has a good management team, a strong track record, a relatively good balance sheet and it owns class A properties. However, these remain office buildings, a lot of them are quite old and they are heavily exposed to coastal markets, which are today doing worse than average. Also, while its balance sheet remains reasonable, it's still quite heavily leveraged. And recently, one of its close peers called Piedmont Office had to refinance some of its debt at a near 10% interest rate. That's despite having less leverage than Boston properties and owning more desirable Sunbelt properties. Therefore, I think that Boston properties is likely to cut its dividend in the coming years as it experiences growing capex and growing interest expense at the same time. Today, its dividend payout rate ratio may not seem high, but remember that it was the same for mall rates back in 2017. Many of them were heavily discounted, offered high dividend yields, and the thesis was simply that there's not much growth, but the yield is high, payout ratios are low, and therefore the dividend is likely to be sustainable, and that on its own should provide high total returns over time. But what investors ignored back then, including myself, is that the rates had to very heavily reinvest in their properties, this was essentially draining their cash flow, they also had to deleverage at the same time, and as a result, even low payout ratios of about 50% end up being too high. I think that a number of office streets, including Boston properties, may be facing a similar scenario today. And for this reason, I think that the risk of a dividend cut is quite high. So these are five REITs that I expect to cut their dividend in the coming years. Now in the next video, I expect to discuss five REITs that will likely hike their dividend. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. And then otherwise, if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, feel free to join my REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. Finally, if you could like this video, that would really help me a lot. Thank you so much. You had my next one. Bye-bye.